welcome everybody to Between the Ropes on WildLifeRadio.com with the king himself, Kenny the Star Maker Ballin. How you doing, Kenny? Well, I'm doing marvelous, but boy, Callie, you seem to have a rough voice today. You got a got a bad cold? What do you got? Yeah, I was taking some hormone shots over the weekend, and I a little overdid it, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, this everyone, obviously, I'm not Callie. Uh, this is Sicko filling in. Uh, Kenny, you spoke to Callie. What's going on? Why isn't she here? Um, well, uh, from what I understand, Callie was feeling a little under the weather today, and she was going to be trying to uh, get well enough to get with the show. And that's who I assumed was going to be here today. But apparently, either one, she didn't get to feeling any better, or two, you buzzards, you... Um, well, what do you call it? Hyenas down there decided that you would cash in on Callie's ratings with Between the Ropes with Kenny the Star Maker Bowling and said, hey, what a lovely opportunity to see, is it Callie and Kenny, or could it be Sicko and Kenny, or could it be someone else and Kenny? And maybe it just ain't all her. Well, I guess we're about to find out, aren't we? Yeah, I guess we will, won't we? Well, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to take too kindly of these ratings dropped today, so you better, you better hope, Sicko, that you got to good show lined up here today. I would have thought maybe Cornette would have kidnapped Callie, but <laughs> everybody knows Callie's about 25 years too old for Cornette, so <laughs> yeah. that would that would be an impossibility. Yeah, I think she's safe for having that happen. But yeah, I'll I'll do my best to pull my numbers. Don't you worry about it. All right. Just worry about your part, all right? Um, yeah, I'm not, not, not feeling the best today myself. Go <laughs> King's dealing with a bit of a toothache today that I should have took care of a couple of weeks ago, but I'm a busy man. As you know, the Bowling Foundation uh, keeps marching on, and, and of course, uh, we've had a lot of negative press this week, a lot of negative comments, uh, yeah. setting records over at the, at the Who Slamming Who show. People all upset about the, well, let's say the testimony that's been coming forward from um, a little girl up in Michigan named Selma. A poor little girl named Irma who's now been institutionalized due to Cornette. And uh, and this young Christian or Klaus or whatever his name is, he came forward last week. And boy, he must have really got everybody going because they really got upset about him. And um, But that, that's kind of what the public is about, though. It, sure. they, they, can't, they can't accept the truth. Nobody wants to be able to handle the truth. They get set in their minds the certain way a person should be, be it Britney Spears, be it Kevin Federline, be it a Jim Cornette, be it The Rock, be it A-Rod, be it Barry Bonds. And once the public persona gets set, that that's how they're perceived. And Cornette has always been perceived as, oh, Mr. Nice Guy, Mr. Always There, Mr. Mr. Exemplary of the Wrestling Business. And I know quite a different Cornette, and that was why when I was asked to start doing the show on Who's Slamming Who, that I, I was asked to talk about what I know best. Well, there's two things I know best. That's for the professional wrestling business itself. I've been in the in the background of the business ever since 1974, and then in the business since 1987. I was well-groomed long before I ever set my first day in the business and managed my first match, managing Tojo Yamamoto in Birmingham, Alabama. So um, if there's anything I know about, it's wrestling and Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette and I were raised five miles from each other. And I just saw a whole lot of things go down. And when we, when we had our debate and we tried to settle up on, on the why he blocked me from getting into the wrestling business, he decided he would throw out some embarrassing personal things about me in, in, in my early years of just breaking into the business and, and not being in the business at all trying to make a living. And he talked about some embarrassing things. And what he forgot is that I was right alongside him on a lot of his embarrassing things that he's been a part of. Some things even criminal. Wow. And um, he's having a hard time dealing with those things right now. Such a hard time that he didn't even respond and boy, if that doesn't tell you somebody's guilty, he didn't even respond to Christian's testimony. He got a little rattled when Selma and Irma came out. He thought he could talk his way around that. But when Christian came out, even though I'm sure Christian jumbled some dates, maybe didn't use all the proper names, 
he rattled something in Jimmy because him and Tommy Fierro over at Who's Slamming Who never said a word. Yeah. And if you had been accused of something like that, sicko, what would you do? Uh, well, <laughs> I'd, definitely I know what I would do. I'd definitely be defending you know myself I if, I, uh, if it was false, that's for sure. Well, of course, if it were false, you would be all over it. Yeah. And if it were true, well, maybe you might keep your mouth shut and hope people go away. Well, I got news for you. I'm not going anywhere. But we're going to talk. Uh, I understand you had some questions lined up for me. You had. Uh, you said that there's another record set on comments over at the. Uh, yeah. Who's uh, blaming who? Normally, people over there get two, three, four, five comments at best. Six would be unbelievable. Yeah, usually if it gets and, to double digits, uh, it's pretty most, amazing. Most people don't take the time to leave a comment. But apparently the last couple of weeks, there's been like 60 or 70 comments combined over the last two weeks of people wanting me off the show. <laughs> and then another band of people defending me, yeah. which shocks me. I don't get a whole lot of that, but, you know, we'll, we'll take whatever help we can get. But, uh, but we're going to talk about a few things today. We're, we may not do as long a show as we normally do due to the, the pain I'm having in my jaw right now. Uh, I call it a toothache, but it is the same jaw that that was fractured uh, when Cornette and had his thugs uh, put a beating on me here a few weeks ago, and I think it's just a reaction to that, to be honest with you. Yeah, uh, Kenny, just to, to, not to cut in on you, but we, we like well, to you say... you did, but go ahead. Yeah, I know I did, but we have to watch out for our legalities and stuff. We like to say alleged beating, because there's no actual truth, or, or not oh, truth, I'm sorry, but, but facts. You're, you're or, speaking, yeah, ordinarily you would have to say that, but you're talking to the guy that got beat. You're talking to the guy who witnessed the people that were putting the thumping on me. One of them looking an awful lot like Dennis Condry. Another one looking an awful lot like Bobby Eaton. A couple other guys I wasn't sure who were. So, yeah, it would be alleged if, if it were a third party. I'm the daggum witness here. I'm the one that got beat. There ain't nothing alleged about it. Yeah, but admittedly you I said you haven't seen it. him in years. So let's just let's, we're just trying to cover our asses here. No, I'm not denying, not doubting you. I'm just... From a legality it standpoint, sounded, so. Sounded like a little bit of doubt to me, but well, until you're the one who uh, gets a fractured jaw, gets gets busted ribs, gets his eye busted wide open, and has a note pinned to his shirt telling him not to have certain people test, testify on my radio show. I mean, he all but signed it, Jim Cornette. I mean, you don't need a whole lot more. All right, point taken. Well, we'll, we'll let it stand there. I, I, I agree with you for now. Um, before we get into the... The podcast, which I'm really dying to get into. I just want your quick uh, opinion on this past uh, WrestleMania. Uh, well, WrestleMania, uh, I did watch. Uh, uh, I didn't spend any money on it, but I had um, uh, some friends of mine invite me over. It had a big cookout and everything. And I said, yeah, what the heck, we'll go here, we'll check it out, and let's see what they produce. Because I've noticed in years past uh, that WrestleMania... Even though it gets the hype, it gets the the, the the glitz and the glamour and everything, it's really getting scaled back. Yeah, and a lot, we're not getting the the Liberacci's, we're not getting all the all the celebrities involved that we used to, and mainly because they all want a lot of money. So I can understand with Vince doing some cutbacks there, uh, but we're not getting the surprises. There, there'd always be that surprise at WrestleMania, that where one thing would happen that nobody was looking for. Well, the thanks to the internet and big mouths in the wrestling business that shouldn't be in the wrestling business, that gets harder and harder. Because you have more and more people involved in the wrestling business who do not have a respect for the wrestling business. We're not brought up in the wrestling business and do, and, and do not know to keep their mouth shut about certain things. Right. Lots more information gets out. And in this day and age, I mean, if Vince McMahon can't run his ship tight enough to keep people's mouths shut about what's going to happen on Monday Night Raw, then how in the hell is he going to keep them quiet about uh, with all the preparation that goes into WrestleMania? Exactly. There's always some big mouth running around there who wants to be the big cheese when it gets leaked out that such and such is going to happen or so and so has been signed. And... Um, and like I said, with the Internet out there, and there's people that pay for that information, it's harder and harder to uh, to run your ship the right way. Now, at OVW, we don't have that problem. We don't have writers. We don't have scripters. We don't have people that aren't involved with the wrestling business trying to do our show. And if they were, they're gone. 